Hi, good day to all and I wish you a great trading week ahead as we wrap up this Q1 2021 quarter as we have three more days to go before the end of Q1. So welcome to this week of weekly technical outlook on the major stock indices. I will touch on the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100, the Hong Kong 50, the Japan 225 and the German 30 for the last trading week of this quarter one. So before we start, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. Alright, so before we jump into the current technical configuration that I would like to share with you all on all the major stock indices that I would like to cover and as well as the trend buyers and the key levels to watch for this coming week, let's take a look at the usual, uh, we call it the performances of the major benchmark indices across the globe. So what I've added for this week is will be the Q1 2021 performance. So this is not the end of Q1 yet because as we know that there's three more trading days to go. So this as at of the means from the 4th of Jan this year till 26th of March, which is last Friday close. So as we could see that based on the current situation, uh, I would say that Q1 to date performance based on last Friday, pretty positive across the board. Uh, the one that is coming pretty strong definitely will be the Russell 2000. And what we see here is we have the pretty weak one will be the Hans, the Hansing Tech Index where it con consists of the usual Chinese uh, big tech like Tencent, Alibaba, Pai2. It's actually negative 4.24%. So if we could recall since the start of the year, we're talking about before the Chinese Lunar New Year, it's up close to 30% year to date. Then thereafter, as we know that uh, the rhetoric I would say the ho hawkish rhetoric from the Chinese government where they try to actually clamp down the business practices of this China's big tech and they're concerned about their, their negative uh, repercussion in terms of their lax, relaxed uh, credit lending to peer-to-peer to -peer credit lending that create this kind of negative feedback loop on the China's big tech stock. So that, that could explain the current situation on this Hong Kong Hansing tech index. So on a shorter time frame, let's look at last week weekly performance. Pretty positive on especially on the US stock indices, on the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones. And one thing that is uh, standing pretty out, the outlay will be the Russell 2000. So as I mentioned in my Twitter feed that why the Russell 2000 is so weak is primarily due to this quarterly portfolio rebalancing where we start to see that yes, the strongest one in the quarter towards when it comes towards the end of the last few weeks of the end of the first quarter where we see a bit of a uh, profit taking, taking shape which is pretty prevalent on the Russell 2000. So uh, almost the same as the prior week, negative 2.66, but was off from the average four week average performance, which is at negative 1.35%. So uh, if I were to touch on the remaining of the major indices like the Hansing index, the Hansing tech index, similar, uh, kind of a weak performance as well versus its prior week and its prior four week average, especially so on the Hansing Tech Index. Then the one on the Nikkei 225, fair pretty underperformed last week as well, negative 2% versus almost unchanged last week and a slight 0.16% loss in the prior four week average. So the one that's holding steady definitely will be on the, oops, sorry on the German DAX index. So on the German DAX, 0.8%, almost the same as the last week weekly performance, 0.82%, slightly below its four week average of 1.13%. All right, so all in all, right, if you could see this current picture over here is that it doesn't seem to me that we are kind of a, in the process of a distribution process or a major topping process that tell us that, hey, the current major uptrend phase, we're talking about multi-month, more than six months uptrend phase since the start of March 2020 low last year is game over. So uh, from what I see over here is that from a weekly perspective, we're talking about multi-week perspective, it's more like a mixed bag where we start to see cyclicals and value oriented or heavyweight or value 
uh, cyclical value heavy weighted indices will actually tend to actually outperform much better compared to the rest of the world so that could explain why the positive uh, we call it uh, very stable performance on the German DAX as well as the Dow Jones Industrial Average so with that let's jump into the technical configuration and the key levels that I would like to highlight for you for this coming week all right so let me take you through CMC markets platform okay let me let me start with before I jump into the SPX 500 the one that I like to share will be a proxy of growth will be this iShares Philadelphia Semiconductor ETF so in short form it calls SOX it actually comprises the major semiconductor stocks that are listed on the US stock exchange then they basket it together into an ETF called SOX SOSX for us to have a easier analysis on the broader semiconductor industry so if you look at the semiconductor industry SOX in short this ETF last week price action is pretty positive all right a strong rebound over here those who know a bit of Japanese candlestick this we call it a daily morning star a bullish reversal uh, where does it reverse it reverse off right at this ascending channel support slightly above it that is in place since the major uptrend that has taken shape on 18 of March low and as well as the 100 day moving average and last week price action on Friday has managed to close above the former descending resistance that has kept previous rebound since the high of 17th of Feb that is the all time high and RSI is pretty positive as well inching up above this, the, the, this, this uh, significant corresponding support and still has much much room to go before he go back to the uh, overbought region so as long as this key support level holds at 36550 right now potentially right we technical configuration and technical elements are positive the odds are in favor of the start of a new impulsive potential uplift to actually see new highs at 458 which is consists of this one time Fibonacci expansion level for this germ uh, for this uh, semiconductor ETF so all in all right what we actually representing over here based on the proxy of growth which is SOX is implies to us that similar like I shared with you earlier on it's not um, the current few weeks of price action on the major stock instances doesn't represent a major topping process yet okay now let's jump to the SPX 500 going on to the daily configuration okay given this is the daily configuration as we could see here it attempt to test this 39.90 level that's our first target that we have for last week tested twice pull back again and last Friday it actually attempt to actually close at 3973 to re very close to this 3990 level so no change what I want to highlight to you over here is that the last few weeks is it tried to actually come down again try to test this ascending channel support of this major uptrending phase that is intact since 23rd of March 2020 as well as the 50 day moving average test over here and shape a rebound Japanese candlestick wise positive as you start to shape a daily bullish reversal hammer on the 21st of 25th of March before closing much higher on the 26th of March which is last Friday so all in all right daily technical elements are pretty positive so let me highlight to you on the 4 hour chart so still we call 4 hour chart we have this 3860 slash 50 as my key medium term pivotal support to maintain that bullish bias that I highlight last week for you as you could see that pullback from the high of 18 of March all the way down to 25th of March it's smack right at this medium term pivotal support before shipping this strong rebound so what we highlight that this predefined zone here 3860 slash 50 is indeed a very key inflection level that actually attracted bullish biases or bullish pressure to come into the market to rescue or to shape this bullish reversal and erase off the previous short term or negate off the previous short term negative feedback loop that has taken shape from 18 or much high so all in all right uh, maybe based on this strong push up on last Friday we could see a bit of pullback towards uh, around this left zone of 3930 slash 3910 so definitely for a medium term perspective we're talking about a multi-week outlook I do not want to tighten the key pivotal support to too tight so 3860 slash 50 will be my key medium term pivotal support level to maintain this bullish medium term outlook that I have on the S&P 500 
in the end uh, to actually retest this 3960 slash 3990 level my first uh, resistance to watch a break above 3990 should take us up higher towards 4080 slash 4100 level all right on the S&P so now moving on to the tech heavy index so next tech 100 so as you all know that uh, I earlier I mentioned earlier on that right now we do not want to uh, it will be not like across the board bullishness from the, all the major indices is more those who have cyclical and value weighted will tend to outperform so for Nasdaq 100 as you all know that close to 30% of it is heavily weighted in these three big stock which is the Apple uh, Amazon as well as Microsoft so uh, this particular tech stock or gold stock based on its technical configuration I still expect it to be pretty weak going forward weak as in sideways or underperform the cyclicals of, of value uh, oriented stocks so if you could see the Nasdaq 100 right it's still pretty much close to okay, the all time high is this level on 16 of Feb or 15 of Feb 13875 so if you look at it over here it's different from the S&P where it's actually right now less than 1% away from its all time in fact it's already trying to challenge and break above its all time high but if you look at the Nasdaq 100 right it still has about 7% more to go before retesting its all-time all high and it's going to trade sideways below this 50-day uh, moving average which is the 13,340 the upper limit of the neutrality zone that I have last week so no change for the Nasdaq 100 still pretty much neutral between 13,340 and 12,180 so still expect to go sideways over here in this region so technical configuration wise if you look at the short term 4 hour chart it may start to shape look at these three boxes uh, right now it could extend slightly over here it seems to me that it's still trying to evolve in this very short term bullish inverse head and shoulder formation but it got to break above the neckline resistance at 13,340 first before I could uh, more confidently validate a bullish uh, push up to shape new high to target the first resistance at 14,030 so no change in my uh, medium term uh, uh, technical analysis strategy on the Nasdaq 100 still neutral between 13,340 12,180 now moving on to Hansing or the Hong Kong 50 index we call in our platform so for Hong Kong 50 right last week it shaped a kind of a dramatic uh, decline with the break of this neckline support of this head and shoulder bearish breakout and if you look at technical elements why well, this is the daily chart so what we could see that the next support level on the medium term right should be around this zone at 26,650 uh, slash 20, 25,760 which is so this pullback line support of the former major descending resistance that was taken out in late last year all right now this getting at the pullback support and if I draw a feeble retracement for you all to see taking from the swing low of 25th of set all the way up to the 18th of Feb high is close to the 50% and the 61.8% feeble retracement as well so all in all this is, seems to be a key inflection level but what's interesting is that the last uh, three tr two days from Thursday on Friday this today price action is pretty positive it start to bounce off from this uh, 100 day moving average all right over here in the middle of nowhere I said the 100 day moving average and we have the neckline resistance of this head and shoulder coming in at 28,700 so that if you look at the RSI you also bounce off from the middle of nowhere uh, rather not bouncing off from the oversold region where previously it managed to kickstart a a more stronger uh, bullish reversal on the index itself so this seems to be uh, in the middle of nowhere and if you look at it over here it's still below the 50% uh, 50, 50, 50 level mark on the RSI so to me right uh, technical elements right right now doesn't seems quite convincing for me to actually see a further potential upside or a start of a potential new uh, impulsive up leg for this Hong Kong 50 index so with that right for this week I will be more inclined to turn neutral between 28,700 and 27,500 that means we are looking more because sideway form sideway movement between these two ranges so unless we could have a kind of a daily close above 28,700 then I'll be more confident to actually validate a potential start of a new impulsive uplink sequence to actually uh, kind of test this support this resistance zones in the first step which is 29,575 slash 30,140 
All right now moving on to another Asia, Asia indices will be the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225 we call in our platform so uh, before, as we call that uh, Nikkei 225 or Japan 225 uh, last week we did highlight that it's kind of a trading within a kind of a triangle range which indeed is true pretty messy right now from a medium term perspective so what I'm writing on medium term is multi-week from my say of about one to three weeks not one to three months uh, from this perspective so because I keep mentioning medium term medium term so my medium term horizon is one to three weeks all right so this is the daily chart of this Nikkei 225. So if you look at since the high of 17 of Feb, that means we're talking about before the Chinese New Year break, it try to churn between this kind of sideways formation. So if I were to look at into a, 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 a bigger perspective, right, it seems to me that it's a kind of a symmetrical triangle. RSI managed to bank always hold off to this corresponding support at the 40 level still holding above the 50 level over here so this way what it means uh, once it will be this side formation it tends to toggle around this above and below that 50 level so last week it went below 50 and went back up again so with that right given uh, this kind of sideway configuration on this um, this this Nik Japan 225 so I'll be I will say that it still have some more room to run uh, some more room to play play out in this symmetrical uh, tr or triangle range formation. Why? Because uh, I'll, let me share with you from a Elliott Way perspective, right? Taking from the start of 16th of Feb to 5th of March, you know, this is considered the first leg of this symmetrical triangle. The second leg, the third leg, now undergoing a fourth leg, and potentially we start to see a fifth leg again to retest the 28,300. So uh, those about the elliott wave kind of a triangle it comes in five legs which is a b c d now it's doing a kind of d then potentially another leg to do the leg e before potentially completing this symmetrical triangle range so with that uh, i'll be more inclined or more more preferred to actually maintain a neutrality range or neutrality stands for this week uh, strategy that means we're talking about neutral between 30,230 and the lower limit will be at the triangle support which is at 28,300 level so uh, staying pretty much neutral for this week on the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225 it is continue to actually evolve within this symmetrical range triangle configuration in place since 16 of Feb 2021 high now moving on to the German DAX or the German 30 index this is one of the strong outperformer due to its heavily weighted towards cyclical and value stocks so uh, this German 30 index or the we managed to actually uh, I will say that printed a close last Friday at 14,850 which is very close to our first resistance at 14,930 slash 15,020 that I highlighted uh, last week for you all. So no change on this uh, German 30 index as it continue to shape higher high and higher low. The 50 week or pardon me, the 50 day moving average coming to support at 14,130, which is the former range stop from 11 of Jan to 9 of Feb now turns into a pullback support level. So now going on to the four hour chart, since it's going to shape higher high and higher low, that means uh, all-time high already. So last Friday it was an uh, all-time high at 14,852. All right. So I will actually tighten the medium-term pivotal support for this week to at this region here. I will say that this minor swing, uh, medium-term uh, swing low level that seems to have tested three times since 10th of March holding never break below it at 14,400 level and also the lower boundary of this shorter term ascending channel from 26th of Feb 2021 so uh, I'm looking for kind of a, a minor pullback towards 14,660 level but definitely 14,400 will be the key minimum support to watch that means as long as they have a 4 hour close below 14,400 uh, potentially it could still shape another round of new up leg to see potential new higher high or new all time high at 14,930 slash 15,020 level again then thereafter to to actually uh, target the higher level at 15,150 level all right so uh that's all i have for this um this week and bear in mind that uh for asia most of us will be closed 
most of the markets in Asia will be closed on this coming Friday due to this uh, Easter holiday and will reopen again on next Monday. So overall, uh, all in all, right, we do not see a kind of a major topping process yet for the global stock market and those stock indices that tends to be, be more heavily weighted on the cyclical and value stocks will continue likely to outperform against the rest of the world. So with that, have a great trading week ahead and I'll see you all in my next video.